Welcome back, everybody. Chad from Patriot Astro here. We're going to continue our polar alignment series here, this time using drift alignment in PHD2. Now, many of you certainly use PHD2 for guiding. I'm going to show you another use for it, which is polar alignment. Now, before we get started here, it's suggested that we point our telescope near the meridian and celestial equator. I'm going to do this uh, within Stellarium just because I can put the guidelines up and select something. You can see my telescope slewing there. Now within PH2, I'll just go to Tools and then Drift Align. You can certainly try to slew from here. I just chose to do it from Solarium. But once you're in the tool and you're pointing in the right location, you can click Drift. And what we're going to do here is we're going to watch the trend lines at the bottom. You'll notice I said I'm doing 2x speed right now. Throughout this video, I'll change the speed just so you don't have to watch the entire 20 minute polar alignment process. Now what we're looking at here at the bottom, what I've highlighted is our polar alignment error. We're trying to get that close to zero and you're watching the deck trend line, the red trend line right now that's skewing downward. Okay, future chat here with a quick interruption. You'll notice there's a magenta circle on the screen, and during drift it shrinks and grows, and in the middle is the star that we're monitoring. When you go to adjust uh, your mount, what you want to do is watch that screen and try to move the star we've been monitoring to the magenta line on the circle itself. The closer you can get the star to that line, the more likely it is that you're going to address the amount of polar alignment error you currently have. Um, this can limit the amount of iterations and back and forth you have, which you're about to see me do here. So just keep that in mind um, as you're moving your knobs on your mount, is that this is another way you can try to get closer with each particular adjustment you make. So I'll go ahead and click adjust uh, before I move anything on my mount. And then I'll walk over to my mount and I'm going to adjust the um, azimuth knobs, the left and right knobs. Now, the first time you do this, it's a 50-50 chance if you go in the right direction, unless you've done this before. So I'm going to make an adjustment, and then I'll come back and click Drift, and we'll let it drift again, and we'll see what happens with that trend line. Now, as a result of the change I made, I know I moved my left knob backwards. So looking at this trend line, I obviously moved the trend line from pointing down to up. So it moved the trend line upward and actually probably too much. I'll go ahead and click adjust again. I'll go back to my azimuth knobs. And this time I'm going to turn forwards so that it actually should move that trend line downward. So we'll click drift and we'll see the result. Again, throughout this video, I am speeding up this process. We can see it didn't seem to move downward too much, but you need to give this a little bit of time. Um, the longer you let it run, the shallower the trend line tends to get, right? It's, a, it's less of a slope, but we'll go ahead and see, we do need to move it down. So I'll click adjust. And then again, based on my previous findings, I'll move the appropriate knobs. And when I'm ready, I'll come back and click drift again. So you can see the process is a bit of back and forth. Um, I obviously, in this case, appear, at least this point early on, to have moved downward, uh, the trend line downward, a little bit too much. So we're going to go ahead and adjust that yet again here in a second. We'll make our change. And then we'll come back and watch the drift. Now we're getting very close here. You can see the polar alignment error has minimized pretty dramatically at this point. So we'll go ahead and adjust it yet again, trying to fine tune it here. 
And as the process continues, it's smaller and smaller movements trying to get that polar alignment error to be as small as possible. So you can see at this point, I'm really just trying to fine tune back and forth between adjusting the knobs and allowing it to drift so I can see the trend line, adjusting the knobs and allowing it to drift. So now after this last adjustment, looking at this drift, this is pretty good. This azimuth is pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is go back up to the tool now that my polar alignment error is approaching zero. And you see there's an altitude button, click that button and that'll bring us to the altitude adjustment. Now notice that that button changed to azimuth. You can kind of go back and forth. Now when I go to altitude adjustment, we need to change the pointing location of the telescope either to the western or eastern horizon, specifically along the celestial equator. So I'm going to pick the western horizon based on my uh, viewing capabilities where my telescope is set up. And I'm going to try to get as low as I can on that western horizon without any obstructions. Now that I've slewed there, I can basically start the process over. I'm going to go to drift and I'm going to watch the deck line again. So I'm always watching the deck line, watching that red trend line and watching that polar alignment error. I'm looking to see where it is. And just like I did when modifying the azimuth knobs, now I'm going to adjust when I go to adjust here, I'm going to adjust the front and back um, altitude knobs. So this is going to adjust my up and down. And again, the first time you do this, it's probably 50-50 unless you've done it before. So I know I'm below where I want to be. I'm going to make an adjustment. And then I'm going to come back and uh, click drift here. And when I click drift, I'm going to be ready to watch the drift results and see what moving that knob did. In my case, I know that I moved my altitude adjustment knob, the back one, clockwise. And as a result of moving that clockwise, it looks like we moved up. So I can make that note, which means if I move counterclockwise, it'll be down. So I'll put these notes in here so that next time I do this, I'll have this available. And you can see I'm already getting pretty close. Um, but of course, trying to fine tune it, I'm going to make some modifications here. So just like last time, I'll click adjust. I'll make a modification. When I'm ready, I'll go back and click drift and monitor it. And then I'll go adjust it again and drift. And again, this is just a bit of back and forth. So you can see we'll um, watch the drift again. And it looks like I'm above the line. Again, give it some time to settle out. Uh, could be seeing conditions. It could be a number of things, right? So don't just react too, too quickly. That is one of the challenges I have with this mechanism for polar alignment. It is a little bit time consuming because we have to wait for the drift trend line to show us what it's really doing. And that means waiting some time and getting enough data points every time we go back to drift. So again, we've gone through another adjust and drift cycle. And we can see it looks like we still need to move it downward. Another problem I have with this particular mechanism is that I'm making changes and I don't see real-time data or real-time feedback to the adjustments I'm making. And my knobs on the mounts are need to be greased. They're uh, a little uh, sticky at times. So sometimes I can't make an adjustment. And then when it finally does loosen up, it moves more than I wanted it to. So it gets a little bit difficult uh, when when you have adjustment knobs that aren't, aren't um, uh, behaving the way you'd like them to behave. But again, it's part of the process and it's just another tool you can use as opposed to some of the other polar alignment tools I've shown you. So you can see here, uh, we're almost done. We're getting pretty close. Um, it's a series of, of up and down, um, back and forth, right? Uh, trying to get this deck trend line to be where it needs to be. So I'll go ahead and make one more adjustment here. And again, changing the um, altitude knobs, right? The, the ones that control up and down. We'll go back and watch the drift after the most recent adjustment. 
and the data starts coming in and this looks pretty good, right? So we're right around zero with scene conditions. It'll bump up and down. And if we let this settle out, we can see we're within one, right? It, it's pretty good at this point. So we're going to call it. So I've done azimuth, I've done altitude, and we'll start to guide. I just close the tool when I'm done and guiding resumes. And, uh, you know, we'll see what this looks like. Now, like I did in my previous videos, I'm going to go ahead and open up my QHY pole master on this mount. And I'm going to run through this very accelerated here. Um, but just to show you what the um, pole master thinks about the alignment we just did. And you can see it's not off by much, right? So the PHD2 solution did get me a pretty good polar alignment. I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, QHY pole master confirms it. And now hopefully you have yet another tool you can use for polar alignment if you ever need one. Hopefully this was helpful. And as always, clear skies.